How do you get your foot in the door? Sharon Hornells from here. One of my favorite pair of comfy boots for meandering around. This idiom, this expression goes back to door-to-door -door salesmen or political canvassers. When they were knocking on doors doing sales, of course, they got the door slammed in their face often, more often than not. And the strategy they developed was to stick their foot in the door so that the person who answered the door couldn't actually shut it all the way. Now, people got around that with having chains in their doors and things like that, little hook chains to for security and to lock. But that is where this idiom, this expression, this saying comes from. And it's used to a lot of, it's used in a lot of situations in business nowadays. A lot of times when we talk about getting our foot in the door, we're asking people, how do we start? How do we get involved in a business, a job, a career, an industry? We have to get our foot in the door. We have to, well, you have to start, but what is the first thing that we do? What are some of the things that we can do? I would love people to share in the comments below or you to share in the comments below what you did to start your business, to get your start in your business, to get your foot in the door. What caused you to want to do that and then why did you do it and how did you do it? What was the first thing that you did? Because there's so many people, especially now with COVID-19, hundreds of thousands of businesses, especially in the hospitality industry, the restaurant industry, have shut down and closed, putting millions of people out of, whoops, out of work. And so what do they do now? They need to get their foot in the door, maybe in an entirely different industry, trying an entirely new thing. Maybe they've thrown in the towel like yesterday and they've decided, I don't want to be in the restaurant business anymore. What am I going to do now? So how do you go about that? How could you do that? Lots of different ways. I've, I've gotten my foot in the door. I've been in a lot of different industries, so I've entered through a lot of different doors. A lot of the time, it's been through um, people finding out about my work or something that I do, or me being in one industry and having contacts in another industry. People that we've gone to school with might be all the way back to high school or grade school, people that are now in an area or in an organization or in a career that you're interested in or that you want to do business with. Uh, friends, family, never underestimate. Remember, <clears throat> I think they say, it's usually in network marketing, but they say that each and every one of us human beings, even if we're in COVID-19, we usually have contact with about 200 other people on average. And if each of us have contact with 200 other people and so on and so on and so on, there's 7 billion people on the planet. So we're only six degrees of separation, meaning six people away from anyone on the planet that you'd want to meet. Now, I've never tested that. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I do know that it's a small world in that people that we have know or people that know of us, we come in contact with in the strangest places at the strangest events in different corners of the earth. I can't remember how many times I've been on vacation and I've run into somebody from my hometown or from my college days or from school because we're a mobile society now. We're traveling around. So you never underestimate the power of associations, people that you know, who you know. That's why one of my favorite tools is LinkedIn. Sorry, Facebook, but LinkedIn for business is one of my favorite tools because you can find almost anyone that you want to find with respect to business on that platform. I'm sure with two and a half billion people on Facebook, you can find almost anybody you want to find socially or for business on Facebook as well. But for me, business, LinkedIn, that's my, my jam. So we can find friends, we can find family, we can use social media, we can belong and join different clubs and organizations. It's like, how do you find a mentor? A lot of people I work with in business are like, I want a mentor, I want somebody that's been there and done that in, in my area that will help drag me along. In corporate America, it was really uh, common for people to be seeking out mentors. And I, I had mentors in corporate America and I was a mentor in corporate America for other women and other other young managers coming up. And uh, our clubs and our associations, not only in work, but in our clubs and associations, we can find people to be joint venture partners, people to be allies, people to uh, help us understand an industry better, customers, vendors, suppliers, uh, masterminds. Have you ever been involved in a mastermind? I love masterminds for getting to know other industries, other businesses, getting my foot in the door in other areas of business function that I might not have a lot of knowledge or expertise in. Uh, we can ask for help. We can actually cold call. It's kind of like the old get your foot in the door uh, for stopping somebody and getting their attention. We can call. We can cold call people and ask for help and ask for information. I was in journalism for, its, so, for a long time, so it was really easy for me 
to call up people in different industries, to call up different people and interview them and ask them questions. Nowadays, I have a podcast, so if I want to get to know somebody and they have something I think that would be of benefit to my my listeners, I don't have any problem calling or, or contacting someone, usually through LinkedIn, and saying, hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast. You know, let's schedule a time. Or would you like to have a, a, a time? And I think of all the people I've ever approached or offered uh, to be on my podcast, I think two people have said no. And I realized after I went more in depth and researched those people, they didn't have a whole lot going on. And so I think it was more they weren't comfortable being on a podcast then it had anything to do with, no, they didn't want to be on my podcast. So we can ask. One of the most powerful tools any one of us has in our toolbox is questions and asking. Asking for help. Asking for a question to get an answer. Asking about someone's expertise. Asking for what we want. Asking for an opportunity. I actually had some internships when I was in college. I had an internship with the Honeywell Company, Honeywell Corporation. Uh, and I had an internship with a, a smaller business, and I had, uh, that was it, those were my internships. But I did work for 3M all three summers in between college when I was in college. So I had experience, I had my foot in the door in different businesses, big businesses, big corporations. Because when I graduated from college, I was going to college to be an engineer, I knew I wanted to work for one of a handful of big companies. And working for 3M in the summers and Honeywell in the summers told me that they weren't necessarily going to be the best fit for me. So I went somewhere that was even probably a less good fit for me, but it gave me a great solid foundation in strong uh, personal development and continuous learning and training. And so for that, from that standpoint, that was the perfect fit for me. We can also do something called the Dream 100 or create an offer. When we want something, when we want to get our foot in the door, we can be like everybody else and just do a cover letter and a, a resume, or we can create an offer for the organization in a creative way that gets people's attention. Just like advertising for our businesses, just like marketing for our businesses, we have to get people's attention, especially nowadays in a world that is all about massive messaging, branding, uh, personal branding, uh, so many things that are that are vying for our attention. It's not like when we were kids, hey, there were four TV stations and most of the time you weren't watching television because there wasn't anything to watch. You're out doing things. Nowadays, that's just reversed. Most people are home just staring at a box. You know, some of them are 62-inch screen boxes or, or, you know, full screens uh, like movie theater style, but for the most part, it's still a box that's programming our minds without our permission for the most part, except for the fact that we choose what it is that we're feeding our minds. So how do you get in your foot in the door? How did you get your foot in the door? How did you decide to start your business? Is it an extension of your career? You were in corporate America or you had a job, you did it for some time, and then you decided, I can go out and make this better, I can do it on my own. That's how you got your foot in the door, was working in the industry. Share in the comments below, because this inquiring mind would love to know, and, uh, Share if you've used this expression. I definitely have used the expression, I need to get my foot in the door, or I want to get my foot in the door. How do I get my foot in the door with respect to this individual, this business, this opportunity, this industry, uh, in a lot of instances. So share that in the comments below, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another interesting business-related idiom. I realize I'm out of town in a week, and I am so not prepared. So I'm going to focus on getting prepared, continue with the idioms, and I will see you tomorrow. Any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, have an absolutely amazing day. Bye. Get your foot in the door now.